You know what I love? I love that as long as I've been doing this show for the last couple weeks, every time I go live, when I hit the go live, I see one thumbs up already waiting for me. That is such a nice little pleasure. It's, I, mean, I know it's, it's trivial. I know it's silly. But to know there's already a thumbs up before we, we've even started, I got to tell you, that makes me feel pretty good. Welcome back to another episode of Alone Together. I'm Tyrell Bramwell, the pastor of St. Mark Lutheran Church in Ferndale, California, as far west as you can go on the continental United States before you dip into the ocean. That's right, we're deep behind the Redwood Curtain, the north edge of the Lost Coast. And today I'm going to jump over to Chicago to talk with a brother in the ministry who is out there dealing with things in his neck of the woods. We're going to see how the church is faring in the middle of this pandemic. But before we do that, let's take a look at our map. Let's see where we've been, and let me show you exactly where we're going. You can see all of our little dots are starting to pepper our continent. We're starting to see this thing fill up. If you know of a pastor or church worker of any kind who would like to talk to me on air about how things are going in one of these empty spots, please reach out to them and help me make the contact. I don't know all the brothers in the ministry in our synod. I sure would like to. Um, so please help me make that introduction and uh, let's get them on air. Well, we're going to Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Chicago, Illinois today to talk to the Reverend Stephen Anderson. Yesterday we were up in Milwaukee, so we just kind of came around the corner a little bit on the map to talk to this brother. Let me introduce you to him now. We're going to bring on Stephen Anderson. How are you today, sir? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for agreeing to come on the show. Um, real quick, I'm going to throw a 15-minute clock on the show just to keep us um, on, the, on the straight path. Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but I know myself, and I can talk for a long time unless someone cuts <laughs> me off. So sure. uh, I'm going to use this, uh, what was called yesterday, the, the countdown of doom. I, don't, <laughs> I never thought it was doom, but uh, I'm going to use this, co this clock to kind of be our, uh, our pedagogue and our, t our teacher today. So uh, he'll keep us on the, on the straight and narrow. Let me throw it up here, and then let's get into it. All right. So, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're in Chicago today. Tell me about Gloria Day Lutheran Church and uh, your ministry there in Chicago. Well, Gloria Day is um, actually one of the uh, later founded churches in Chicago. We're by Midway Airport, kind of on the outskirts of the city. Uh, we were founded in 1939. A lot of the bigger, older churches in Chicago were founded in the 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s. We came a little bit later than that. And um, after World War II, our church really boomed, like most of our churches in, in the Chicago area, in the urban areas. Um, so 20 years after the church was founded, 19 59, they built a school and they opened it. And uh, we've been here on the southwest side of Chicago. This is our 80th anniversary of our congregation. And uh, we operated our school for 60 years. Wow. Um, last year it, it closed, uh, like many of our urban churches. Um, but uh, it's a, you know, we've, we've experienced what a lot of congregations have and that we grew quickly uh, in the post-war era and then had some decline as the neighborhoods changed and um, people moved and uh, the culture changed. But we're a very vibrant congregation uh, because we aren't so much involved in uh, programs anymore. We are a little bit more focused around the things that really matter, yeah. <laughs> the word, grace, mercy, the sacraments. Um, and so it's a, it's a very faithful, vibrant, small congregation. Wonderful. Let me ask you now, as this, this whole show has come about from our isolation due to this sure. coronavirus issue, um, and I'm getting a little bit of static as you're moving just a little bit. I think it might be that inline microphone. Um, okay. Th th just me... for our viewers' sake, if uh, that might work. But let me ask you, how, how has this coronavirus, how is it? impacting churches in Chicago, and specifically your church there in Chicago? Any major impacts? I'm sure there's been a lot. Yeah, well, our last, uh, the last time we gathered for worship, I guess, was March 15th, and so we've been off now for the last Sunday in March and all of April, including Holy Week, and of course, yesterday, the resurrection of our Lord. Um, so we have not been gathering 
what I have been doing, like many other pastors, is a Facebook Live uh, sermon, devotion, okay. Sunday mornings at 9.30, our regular service time. And then I go sit in the narthex with the sacrament uh, and let people in. Usually there's a church officer there with me. And uh, we let people in individually or as families um, to receive the sacrament as they desire it. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a pretty major change here. Our office administrator is on leave because there isn't much for her to do. No bulletins, no newsletters. Um, our financial team is still coming in, but other than that, the building's kind of shut down. And I'm contacting people through the telephone. Uh, we have a system called Member Caller, which is offered by Concordia Technology Services. We can send out phone blasts oh, to people. Yeah, wow. And then through our Facebook page. So, And that's through Concordia Technology? Yeah, it's an it's a excellent service, especially for a congregation like mine, where most of my members are not on Facebook. They are not people yeah. who even own computers in many cases. I'm in that they're same older. situation. That's yeah, a wonderful tool. People. So it's, it's a great tool. It has drawbacks. The, the phone blasts are limited in... in in length, they're under a minute, so you, you can't give a long <laughs> diatribe, but it's for information, just right. little. So I've been sending out one a week since this started uh, about service times, um, updates, things like that. And for people who don't have computers, who don't have smartphones, yeah. uh, who aren't on social media, uh, that's how we've been communicating. And yeah, it, it's through Concordia Technology Services. That's a wonderful tool. I'm going to have to look that up as soon as we're off yeah. air, and I'm still at the mm -hmm. computer here. Um, yeah. I, I'm completely ignorant of that. That's a great... Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a small cost. I mean, you, you, pay, for, you pay for it. Okay. But uh, for a congregation like ours, uh, we have some faithful members who donate the cost, and for, for people who aren't attached to social media, it, it works well. That's a huge blessing for them, for sure. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned that your communion practice is is very intriguing to me. So you have a, a member, uh, an usher, an officer of the church who lets right. people in, and they right. come all the way up to the altar. Or are you still no. doing it? No. Okay. We we have very de uh, we made the decision that we weren't going to use the, the sanctuary. Okay. Um, and it, it's been cleaned. Uh, it's everything in it's been cleaned down to the hymnals, but we don't want people coming in right now. Sure. So our credence table is altar height, and it's very beautiful. <laughs> and so I'm using that as, uh, as an altar. It's okay. vested. It has a corporal on it. it. It has candles on either side, but it's simply set up in our narthex. And so people can walk in, um, have a brief devotion. I have confession, absolution, uh, the collect, reading, prayers, the Lord's Prayer, uh, a part of the communion liturgy, uh, of course, the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer, uh, and then we have the sacrament, the blessing and benediction, and and they go, and then another person can come in. Wow, love it! I love it. And, yeah, and with a small congregation, we can do it. Um, obviously, if we had uh, you know 300 people who came to church every Sunday. It might not work. Uh, <laughs> right. I understand that, but for right. a small congregation like ours, uh, it it does. So. Now, does that um, the way you have that set up is that according to Illinois' um, stay-at-home shelter-in-place type orders? What what's it look yeah. like in Illinois? The, uh, our governor, uh, J. B. Pritzker, and and my mayor, Lori Lightfoot, have been pretty stringent about not wanting people to leave the house. Okay, not gathering in groups of more than 10. Uh, and so we have really been trying to be good citizens and honor that. And, you know, there are people in my congregation who are chafing at it, you know, quite honestly, and I do too, to yeah. a certain extent. But, but we want to respect the authorities. We want to honor those who are put in those positions. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what we've been trying to do. And, um, and our members, I think, are supportive of it. And, you know, some struggle with the church not gathering and meeting and being told that they shouldn't and, yep. or they can't. Uh, yeah. But 
but um, but yeah, we we've been trying to follow keeping the the group small and only individuals or families who are already living together. Of course, sure, of course. Um, so this leads me to Easter. How was uh, how was your Easter resurrection of our Lord Easter Sunday? It's sure. still Easter Monday, right? Um, right? So how was yesterday for you, uh, both personally as a pastor, if you want to go that way, but also for the people? Um, just kind of walk us through what you yeah, guys went through. It, it, was, um, it was hard. It was a little me- melancholy. I mean, we usually have a very joyful, reverent Easter with... Um, we have a wonderful interim organist right now who had some beautiful music planned. Um, mm. We have uh, uh, we usually order a lot of lilies. It's a it's a big service for yeah. for a small congregation, and of course we didn't do it. So um, I had a nine thirty Facebook devotion service from nine thirty to ten, uh, and then like I said, from ten to noon I was in the narthex uh, as people came in individually. But, you know, it was it was different and it was it was sad uh, and it reminds reminded us, I think, of what we are missing. Um, now, of course, what we still have, we still have God's word, his promises. Amen. Christ is still risen. Um, but we're missing that being together. Um, and then, of course, for me personally, um, usually on Easter, I I go to my parents. They live near me. I'm unmarried. Okay. Uh, so I visit usually with my family, my brother and his family. Um, and I didn't do any of that. So, uh, personally it was, it was a time to kind of be on my own and celebrate Easter that way. Yeah. Which so. is very different. I think and that that's probably a reflection of your people as well. Everybody's, uh, family gathering plans are disoriented, right? right? And just, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I was feeling the same way Saturday night. Um, I really started to kind of slip into this funk, um, <laughs> yeah. just kind of pro- projecting into the morning. And yeah. right, thanks for sharing yeah, that with us, Pastor. Yeah, yeah it's very different. You know, I, I do my Facebook Live videos right here in my study because we're not set up for streaming. I'm not particularly technologically, um, uh, what shall I say, uh, technologically ad- uh, adept. <laughs> so um, I just do it here. Uh, I do, I do the, the service here. Um, so then that's different, you know, it's, you know, to turn my computer around, I behind over there, there's a, there's a lectern with candles and that's where I stand. Uh, so, um, but yeah, it's, it's very different than celebrating the Eucharist and, and all the things that we usually do on Easter morning. Yeah, for sure. Let me take a moment to uh, recognize some of our live viewers and, uh, sure. And, and wish them a blessed uh, Easter uh, Monday morning as well. Kathy Sweet and Chico, she's one of our faithful viewers, and she said, Bless, blessed Easter morning. She also says in a minute, I meant Easter Monday morning. So, yes, <laughs> blessed Easter Monday morning to you too, Kathy. Um, Heather, thank you for tuning back in. Go Pastors Go, she says. She's she's always rooting for us. So Wonderful. Pastor uh, Anderson, go, Pastor Go. Yeah. Yeah. As we're talking about this, I, I know that you're also a, uh, a district pr- um, vice president, correct? Right, yeah, yep. Could you talk to us a little bit about the ongoings at the district level, uh, conversations that you can share just in reaction to the pandemic? And Sure. Um, my, I'm the third vice president of the Northern Illinois District. My region is the, what we call the East Region. It's the city of Chicago okay. and the inner ring suburbs. Um, most of the churches in my region are smaller because that's the reality in the city of Chicago. I think there are 57. Uh, many of them are vacant because they simply can't afford pastors. Mm. And many of them are small, smaller. There are some larger congregations still in my region with, with schools and multiple staff and things like that. But, um, but yeah, th- they're all affected I think they're all worried about finances, what's going to happen on the other end of this. Um, we are blessed in the NID to have uh, a very faithful district president and, and district staff. Uh, so we've had numerous Zoom meetings, many, many Zoom meetings uh, <laughs> with the district president and circuit visitors and vice presidents and pastors 
They've also having separate ones for uh, business managers and treasurers to okay. help them navigate this and get through it. My uh, my treasurer has been on at least three Zoom meetings with the district staff. Okay. So they are really trying to support all the churches, all the pastors, all the treasurers and business managers uh, who are having to, to deal with this. And of course, the, the big question is for many of the smaller churches is, will we survive this? Will, will we get through this on the other side? Um, and that's a, you know, a real fear, but yeah. we remain hopeful. Um, our members here at least have been generous. I can't speak highly enough of their generosity during the last four weeks that, you know, the last four Sundays. Um, so I, I hope that's happening around my region and around our district and around the Synod. Yes, me too. And that's wonderful to hear. Um, I, I also, I'm the pastor of a, of a very small congregation, rural congregation, and um, those fears of what's this going to do to us long term? We heard um, Dwayne Bomsch, pastor at Grass Valley, he was talking about that too. That's also a concern for some of those churches who are like you in a bigger area, mm -hmm. but maybe yeah. a smaller congregation. And right. Well, brother, we're at the one minute mark of our countdown oh, wow. of doom. It goes by quick. <laughs> it goes fast. Yeah. Could you leave us with um, some words of inspiration, some something positive to uh, help us for those who have those fears, um, not just financially, but all fears. Could you leave us with something Something good. Um, well, I could leave you with something I was reading. Yes, uh, please. This is from a, a book I look at a lot. It's uh, The Selected Sermons of Norman Nagel, who was uh, uh, a beloved professor of mine. Yes. And I was just reading his Easter sermon. If anyone has this book, I don't know if it's still being published. I think it might be. But um, So this is just a paragraph from the end of his Easter sermon. Okay. Um, the words of the messenger and of Jesus, pick the women up, set them going, alive into doing the words and carrying the message. So for you too, Jesus' Easter words pick you up, pull you on, set you going into the living and doing of the words and the carrying of their message. In the living and the doing of his words, Jesus meets you with the message and gift of be glad, rejoice, go, tell, on your way, no more fear of living and of dying. You go now, you live now, you tell now, Jesus crucified for you and risen for you. That is now where you live, where that is so in his kingdom. Therefore, do not be afraid. There is now nothing in all the world that you can be more sure of than Jesus crucified for you, risen for you. Ain't no grave going to hold this body down. <laughs> so, from, from Dr. Nagel's Easter sermon. Oh, amen. <laughs> so, Thank you so well, much, Pastor, for taking time out of your morning to visit with us and to, uh, to share all of that information. Um, I hope Gloria Day is doing well. I know they're doing well under your care, and I'll be right. praying for your congregation as well as those congregations throughout our synod and the world. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you brother. It's been a privilege being on here. Oh, well, it's a privilege to have you. Anytime we'll have you back as, uh, as we can. That Thanks, Stephen. great. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in, my dear friends out there in the Alone Together world and Facebook land and YouTube world. If you want to uh, share this with someone, let them know about this program. We'd love to keep it going. So use the comment section. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're doing. Use that share button. Use the like button, the heart button. All those fun, fancy ways that you can interact with this show. Tell us your thoughts. Put me in contact with any other church worker you may know that we can bring on this show so that we can... You saw the map at the beginning, right? It's blue. Let's make it orange. Let's pepper that thing with so many dots talking to so many people that it just becomes orange, right? It's simple as that. It'd be like M&Ms covering that, uh, that map. All right, tomorrow's show, we're going to jump from Chicago all the way to Tucson, Arizona. We're going to talk with the Reverend and Mrs. Cochran there at Faith Lutheran Church in Tucson, Arizona. Can't wait for that conversation. I hope you are looking forward to it as well. 9 a.m., out here on the Pacific Coast time, and uh, we will talk to you tomorrow. God's blessings, and have a blessed Easter Monday.